Hello, welcome to the first part of us tell you the history of Joseph. To me, he was the most successful man that ever lived. This man had a heart of forgiving. He had visions. He was very investment wise. He was very strategic in so many different ways. My man was also a bachelor. He had king's wives coming after him. It was crazy. And this is why I also feel like I had to bring my wife along to tell you part of this story. So his father's name was Jacob. And she's going to give you an unpacked it of the amazing story of how Joseph actually derived to be in. <laughs> so basically to give you a little bit more of the lineage of who Joseph was, we're going to go back to who his father and his grandfather was. So Abraham was his grandfather and everyone knows pretty much the story of Abraham where he was very old and God promised him many sons and many, many more to come after that. So Joseph is a part of his lineage. Um, Jacob is the father. And I'll just give you a little bit of story about Jacob and it'll show you why also Joseph was his favorite son. Very special. So uh, Jacob um, happened to meet this woman named Rachel and fell in love with her at mm -hmm. first sight. Anyone has ever fell in love at first sight? Like you fell in love with me <laughs> <laughs> at first sight. <laughs> so he was, his heart was after her. So in order for him to actually marry her, he had to work a certain amount of years because, you know, Seven. back then, uh, yeah, back then, you know, the fathers had to give the daughters away. And usually there was like some type of, dowry or some way that you had to earn that woman so the father of rachel uh said that he could only he could work seven years and receive rachel after the seven years was up though the father was really really tricky and made him take her sister as well leah Mm -hmm. which he really did not want. Uh, he really didn't like or desire, but she had to come with a package or else she did not get, he did not get Rachel. Yeah. It was um, not in the tradition for them to give the youngest one. The oldest one had to get married first. So that's why the father said that had to happen. Right. So Leah was older, so she had to go as well. Uh, now we get to the point where... There was childbearing going on and Rachel's first son with Jacob was Joseph. So mm -hmm. now you kind of see it's his first love and his first son. So he kept Joseph dear to his heart yep. and it kind of made all the rest of the brothers and siblings jealous yep. because I mean of the unfair treatment I would say yeah if you want a lot of drama it exists in the story of Jacob's and that whole relationship between Leah Rachel and Jacob the whole baby mama drama <laughs> it's, <an laughs> it's old all in there soap opera. oh yeah it's all in there you could look into that furthermore if you wanted to but we're gonna start reading the story of Joseph we're gonna read a chapter each week go over it unpack it make sure that you understand exactly because there's a lesson to be learned I feel for how to be a successful man or woman and investment strategies, how to carry yourself, the characteristics and attributes that you should strive for, for you to be successful in life. It's not just about money and obtaining all these things, but there are certain things you should be doing, thinking about and carrying yourselves a certain way, which I think you find in the history of Joseph. So we're gonna get right into it. <laughs> This story starts from Genesis 37, so we're skipping a whole lot of chapters. We're going to go straight for where Joseph starts to be introduced a lot more. So here we go. I'll read the first half, and you can read the second half? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we'll do that. This is from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. I choose that book because it's easier for me to understand. It's more direct English. So... So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. 
he worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Billah and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. He was a tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a little snitch. I think that's the reason why his brothers also did not like him as much. Yeah, I know. If, if you ever had either a young cousin, brother that did that, it was annoying. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you a secret. I was that person. She was I one was. of those, yes. <laughs> I was the baby of my family, so I was like telling on everybody for everything. I wasn't like that. I was good. I was in a snitch. <laughs> Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful rope. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers in the flocks are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the Aryan noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? He asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. They have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. We're going into the latter part of the story uh joseph went in on a journey to find his brothers and finally finds them so when joseph's brothers saw him coming they recognized him in the distance as he approached they made plans to kill him here comes the dreamer they said <laughs> come on let's kill him and throw him into one of these cister cisterns we can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when it, the Ishmaelites who were Midianite traders came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern 
and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented, the boy is gone. What will I do now? Then the brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in its blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said. It's my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Meanwhile, the Benyanite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. And that concludes chapter 37. So as you see from beginning of the story, there's a lot of jealousy going on. Very relevant to today. I faced it. I'm sure you have as well, where you either have a dream and people are going to hate on you on your dreams for just envision it. Yes, you're going to be taken over the world. You're going to reach certain heights. People are going to work for you or be under you. And there's nothing really wrong with that because we all can still eat at the end of the table but we all aren't meant to be leaders some of us are meant to actually be leaders in certain capacities so that's why when one person has a dream and there's people around them that can be supportive does it mean that that person is the only one winning like we all can be winning if we work all together as this unfolds more and more you're gonna see and see how this unfolds and how we all can learn from this even further but from what I took from this is that you can't be jealous. You can't try to just, just cause someone has a dream and they want to go somewhere and you're not thinking that far as well, does not mean you need to be jealous of them, vice versa as well. So that's what I gained from this, but I'll let my wife chime in, in terms of her take before we read some of this commentary, cause this book as well has some insights in terms of how they perceive this chapter to be so go ahead babe well what i gained from it is that um being favored joseph being favored was one thing they kind of dealt with that but as soon as he told them that <laughs> his dream and then they interpreted it like oh so you think you're better than us like we're gonna be serving you you're gonna be our king like they they were not having it right <laughs> so it's like the pride in them that they could never serve anyone or even their brother just the the thought of them serving joseph or being under joseph was so uh, like detrimental to them that they had to kill him literally plan to kill him because of it mm -hmm. and i feel like uh sometimes that's human it's human nature in us sometimes to like you may not even have you may not even have a dislike towards a person but as soon as you see them rising above you or reaching certain certain accolades before you or you don't feel like this person deserves it and you've been working so hard and you have you're like not there where they are and it kind of makes you it makes something rise in you like why am i not there or why um you know why does this person they're doing everything um i would just say i would just say it like this and from a christian standpoint sometimes i look me myself i would look at someone who doesn't serve god and who is not living according to uh god's word but they seem so successful you know on the outside and things like that but 
um, then I have to look look inward and say, is that my pride who's getting angry? Like they have all this stuff. Is that my pride? Is that my jealousy? Like, but at the same time, I can be jealous about their life because that's their life. And God has a certain plan for me and probably even better than that. And I know at the end all, it's always going to be better because we'll have eternal life with God. So that's what it brought out for me and just kind of corrects. It just kind of reminded me not to be like Joseph's brothers because it's very easy to feel certain ways um, towards people or towards siblings or whoever, right, in your life. But knowing that, you know, God does ra raise people up for a certain reason and for a certain season in their life. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen for you either. We all have our turns. The other way you can actually look at this, too, is Joseph was a bit too prideful. Like he opened his mouth. He's running his mouth too much. He was such a tatty tale that he even told on himself about these dreams. And sometimes you have to keep your dreams to yourselves mm -hmm. and work around those dreams with people who you can trust. And his brothers were already jealous of him. So he already knew how they were probably going to react, but he still said it anyway. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm better than you. I'm going to be this. God promised me this. And we don't have to be like that sometimes. Yeah. So that's probably why he ended up in this space anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I actually, I don't think that he actually did it in a prideful way. I just yeah. feel like he was so naive and so, like, because you know, like, being because he was the youngest right yeah so being the youngest it's like you're still kind of naive and you don't yeah. you're not awake to how evil the world could be at, at like that age and so he's just saying it like oh look at this great thing that yeah. i have <laughs> you know or like trying to show somebody like a burglar on the street like oh look at my new shiny ring or like yeah. you know and he doesn't even know what he's doing but he's just saying it because he's so like happy he had this dream like it was out of excitement more than out of um his pride like i'm gonna i'm gonna be this better than you and stuff so yeah i think he just got himself into trouble by just saying way too much and that's another lesson like just keep your mouth closed like you don't yeah. have to say everything in the world that has happened to you or whatever goals and dreams that you have you don't need to tell the whole world you know keep it to yourself and then when it happens it'll happen you know you work towards it in silence yeah so, nothing wrong with that so reading some of this commentary that this book provided so this is in reference to Genesis 37, verse 3. In Joseph's day, everyone had a robe that was worn as primary art of garment. These were put to many uses, including bundling up belongings for a trip, wrapping up babies as a blanket to sit on, or even serve as security for a loan. Most robes were knee length, short sleeve, and plain. In contrast, Joseph's robe was probably like the kind worn by royalty, ankle length, long sleeve, and colorful. This robe became a symbol of Jacob's favoritism towards Joseph, and it aggravated the already strained <laughs> <laughs> relations between Joseph and his brothers. Favoritism in families may be unavoidable, but its device, divisive effects could should be minimized. Parents may not be able to change their feelings towards a favorite child, but they can choose to act wisely and fairly with all their children. And let's pause there. Let's talk about that because, yeah, I know I'm my grandma's favorite, <laughs> but I can't say I'm my mother's favorite, but I think I'm my grandma's favorite. We were just always so close. And I could say, yeah, my cousins used to hate on me because of that, because I was always the favorite till this day. She talks about me very nicely and very well. So <laughs> that's my experience with favoritism it actually played in my favor in that sense tell them about your spoiled uh, <laughs> experiences <laughs> okay he swears i'm the favorite but i'm not the favorite i my mom and dad has greatly equally applied their love to all of us it's five of us and i don't feel like i'm the favorite but i do know that 
out of all of my siblings, I'm the baby. So that makes a difference in the way that I'm treated as well as the way that like I can communicate with my parents because like I can tell them things that my other siblings couldn't t in a tone or a manner that my other siblings couldn't get away with basically. She got all the love because after they finished experimenting and failed <laughs> with all the other kids, she was the last one that came about. So she got all the good loving that they they failed at with the other ones. So to me, from the outside, she was the favorite. She received a lot of favoritism, but it's all good. <laughs> Still love you, baby. <laughs> all right. The next commentary is in reference to Still 37, verses 6 to 11, Joseph's brothers were already angry over the possibility of being ruled by their little brother. Joseph's still young and probably immature, like my wife had mentioned, right? Then seems to have fueled the fire with his attitude and boastful manner. <laughs> <laughs> no one enjoys a braggart. <laughs> Joseph learned this the hard way. His angry brother sold him into slavery to get rid of him. After several years of hardship, Joseph learned an important lesson. Because our talents and knowledge come from God, it is more appropriate to thank him for them than to brag about them. Later, Joseph gave God the credit. Mm. That is true. It's part of the point that we brought up where you, you can be so prideful and be boastful at times. You may find people who doesn't have as much as you do, but doesn't mean that you need to brag about what you have. You know, be appreciated. Thank God for them every single day. I That's one thing I always do. I thank God for every day. The people in my life, not just the materialist thing, but the relationships that I value dearly close to my heart because those people help shape my character, the person that I am today. They help keep me in line in terms of falling out of places sometimes i have no business being in so i'm very grateful for those people and i thank god every day for all these things so mm -hmm. what has your experiences been like in that sense have you been boastful <laughs> no i don't think i have been boastful um because of my upbringing we were always taught to be humble my mom is a very humble woman and oh, yeah. i just learned from that same as my dad he's never been boastful um he's always been like just a helper whenever he had something he always wanted to give or volunteer his time his effort whatever it was so i think i, I think just being raised by my parents just helped me to be humble yeah 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 her father's definitely that guy so always helping around a bit too much at times but it's all good i yeah. still love him <laughs> So this is in reference to verses 19 to 20 now. Can you imagine feeling so jealous that you wanted to kill someone before saying, of course not. Look at what <laughs> happened in the story. I'm sure we all would say that, right? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> These men were willing to kill their younger brother over a robe and a few reported dreams. Their deep jealousy had grown into ugly rage, completely blinding them to what was right. Jealousy can be difficult to recognize because our reasons for it seem to make sense, but left unchecked, jealousy grows quickly and leads to serious sins. The longer you cultivate jealous feelings, the harder it is to uproot them. The time to deal with jealousy is when you notice yourself keeping score of others' recognition, awards, and achievement. Uh, one thing I could say I do is if I felt a little hatred towards someone, they got somewhere before I did, is you congratulate them. Don't don't just skip it and let it pass by. Don't be very passive about a situation like that. Just tell them I'm so happy for you, even though <laughs> you know there's a part of you that isn't so happy. You're like, I deserve that, right? That should have been me up there. But do that as a sense of you're humbling yourself because not every opportunity is going to be for you. The fact that you didn't win that achievement or that opportunity wasn't for you doesn't mean you don't have another one for you because you're going to have someone else when you get those achievements and opportunities that are looking at you the same way. So and you don't know how they're going to react, but you would want them to do the same to you. So you do unto others as you would want done to you in that sense. Congratulate them and tell them I'm happy for you. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? I feel like when it comes to jealousy of another person, I feel like 
actually that should be your fuel to work harder towards because like if you're only jealous of something that you because you wanted that right so it kind of gives you clarity more mm -hmm. clarity of what you need to be working towards in your life because that's what you truly desire right um it just gives you fuel to the it gives fuel to the fire for you to keep going and um and then like my husband said like don't let it get under your skin to the point where you're hating the person now but realize you need to just take a step back and be like wow i'm gonna be them one day right or i'm i'm gonna want the congratulations when i get there or when i reach my next success move right so i think that's where jealousy can kind of be good in a sense you know yep that's a fact so next commentary this is in reference to verse 26 to 27 the brothers were worried about bearing the guilt of Joseph's death, Judah suggested an option that was not right, but would leave them innocent of murder. Sometimes we jump at a solution because it is the lesser of the two evils, even though it is still not the right action to take. When someone proposes a seemingly workable solution first, asks, is it right? That is true. Um, keep on reading. This is in reference to verse 28. Although Joseph's brothers didn't kill him outright, they probably didn't expect him to survive for long as a slave. They were quite willing to let cruel slave traders do their dirty work for them. Joseph faced a 30 day journey through the desert, probably chained and on foot. He would be treated like baggage and once in Egypt would be sold as a piece of merchandise. His brother thought they would never see him again, but what God was in control of Joseph's life and had other plans. Mm. We're going to see how this unfolds further. So this is just giving us a slight preview of what's going to happen, but not spoiling it. That's for next mm -hmm. time. Yeah. No. And I just have a question for you guys. Like, have you ever felt like like Joseph at this point where it's just like you thought you were around your brothers or you thought you could trust these people or trust people and then all of a sudden you end up in a pit like you be <laughs> <laughs> or you end up being sold to slavery not literally but metaphorically like you you the very opposite of where you thought you was gonna be you ended up somewhere else right and it's just like where did you where do you pull your hope from at that point like i i i wonder what joseph was thinking through his head like while he's chained and like walking with the camels or whatever to get to the other to get to egypt i wonder like literally what was going through his head like i can't believe because you know how then we'll start cursing people out in our <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which we're not supposed to be doing but it's like i can't believe they did this like who does this like this is my brothers they sold me they did this they did that oh my gosh if i ever see them again wait till i you know yeah. see them you know or was he i'm trying to think like was he doing that or was he like god i know there's a plan for me like this cannot be happening and you not have a plan like, I, I really would like to know what Joseph was thinking in this moment, because I, I don't know what I would be doing. I'd probably yeah. be just be like, <laughs> I'd be livid. I would be crying. I would be like so hurt, too, because this is like your own brothers did this to you. So, like, I would be super hurt to the fact that. Yeah, it's a very painful part of that experience, which I could say. I've faced that before and I've seen people that you find close to you that you can trust. They ended up ditching you in some way, shape or form mm -hmm. where it's always going to be hurtful in that situation because that person you trusted so much and you expected better from them. And that's not what it turned to be. So when that happens, you you do learn from it. I can say that your heart becomes stronger, but you learn to to not do that to someone else too, because of the fact that you've experienced it and now you're not gonna pass it on. So it's really good to share when those hurts happen to God, communicate with him, 
because he's ultimately in control as this was not part of the scriptures, but in this commentary stated that God is in control and can overturn a lot of things. You don't know the plan that God has for you. So the fact that those people hurt you is meant to strengthen your heart and keep you going and keep you courageous throughout more challenges and obstacles that you're going to be facing is preparing you for that. Because if that next challenge, the hurt is going to be much worse, but because your heart was prepped for it, it's not going to feel as bad. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I took away from that. But continue reading. This is in reference to verse 29, 30. Reuben returned to the cistern to find Joseph, but his little brother was gone. His first re response in effect was what will happen to me rather than what will happen to Joseph? <laughs> this is the selfish part of us, right? This is what we do at many times. In a tough situation, are you usually concerned first about yourself? Consider the person most affected by the problem and you will be more likely to find a solution for it. Now, is that true for you today? Like when you face with a problem, are you more concerned about how this is going to affect me? Or do you have empathy for the other person, people that it's going to affect? And like this stated, sometimes you'll find a solution when you're thinking about the overall. That is typically the best solution. It's not the solution that favors you the most, but the solution that favors everybody overall will be the best solution. So that's my take on that. What do you, do you have anything, any comments to add? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, it's so funny because it, it reminds me of a situation where I was like, <laughs> you gotta share it. <laughs> this reminds me of it of the photographer oh <laughs> that yeah we had. yeah um for it was just a hot mess and that like i don't i still to this day when i think of it it kind of gets me upset because <laughs> it's like somebody you trusted to do the job and then they were reassuring you at the same time while you're doing the photo shoot and then they're gonna be there they're gonna show up they got your back and they literally <laughs> just ghosted like not no yeah. no pictures back and this was from my engagement shoot so it was like really important to me because i didn't know it, it was like a surprise shoot so i didn't even know it was happening but i have no recollection other than my memory of being proposed to because yeah. the photographer just went MIA. And then I tried to like say, okay, maybe something happened to him. Like, hopefully he didn't die. He's not in the hospital. Like during the week that he was supposed to deliver, you know, give us the pictures and stuff, like literally MIA. And then I'm like, all right, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's super busy on a project because he is a photographer and video whatever he does and okay i'll give it another week then after a week go by i'll give it another week and then it's just <laughs> like you know what just forget it just forget yeah. it i had to just let it go because it's like i would have been and then like i tried to be that person was like well what will happen to what will happen to me now like what like where's yeah. my pictures now like you left me in this spot like you know it's it was so annoying but i actually sent um during the time of our photo shoot he was bringing up memories of his late wife and so maybe i was like maybe it struck a chord in him did he have like a mental breakdown or like yeah. i don't know what happened and i still don't know to this day but i like just trust god that whatever we did with him like left the imprint on him because we did speak about uh christ with him and how like you know things happen in our lives and we don't have an explanation like for his wife passing away and stuff like that um and I also shot him a text later on during the holidays, actually, like during this was like a month or two later after the wedding, um, just saying, like, you know, I really appreciated the time that you, you know, uh, were with us and hope you're doing well. I know it's a hard time for people who's lost loved ones during this holidays. Just let you know that we're here if anything, but I still didn't receive anything back. Hmm. So I was just like, you know what? Now I'm really done. But at the same time, I was like, I have to be humble and I have to be godlike. And it's just like, as many times as we ghost God, 
<laughs> yeah, we've done it too. <laughs> and as many times. times as we told God we were going to do something and we never did it, and or many times as we failed God, he never was like, yo, you told me you was going to do this and da 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 <laughs> And no, I don't want to hear it no more, you know? So I'm like, you know what? I have to be like that. And if he ever does reach out to me or us, like I'm going to treat him with the most kindness because... God treated me with the most kindness when I turned my back, when I did wrong, when I, you know, ghosted God. So it's like, you know. Yeah, that's what you always got to remember is what is going on with the other person. You yeah. got to think about that. So no matter how much someone has hurt you, because I had business relationships where it, it happened like that, ended like that. But instead of being so concerned about what would happen to me and, and stuff, where, where you're laid off, if you ever was laid off at a job or you had a partnership going on and for some reason you were disbanded, just think about what the other people are feeling, what they may be facing. And they may not give it to you, the, the response, the emotional connection that you were seeking and desire, the explanations, just let it be. And, and over time, your heart will strengthen towards situations like that. I can tell you after one layoff happened to me, like <laughs> nobody could ever lay me off and I feel away anymore. To me, it's like, oops, I got to move on to the next thing. You got to keep having the attitude. I got to keep going. I got to keep striving through to my next thing and can't keep dwelling on something that you can't change. You have no control over at that point. You just got to yeah. move on. So that's just what it is. Moving on. All right. Commentary. So this is for verses 31 to 35 to cover their evil action. Jacob's sons deceived their father into thinking Joseph was dead. Jacob himself had deceived others many times, <laughs> including his own father. Mm -hmm. Even though he didn't know it at this point, Jacob was learning by hard experience the painfulness and destructive consequences of deceit. Right. You do unto others. As you want done unto you. Sometimes we're faced with certain hurts ourselves and we probably have done it to somebody else in the past, but we haven't realized it. And then the same way that person was like, I hope it happens to him in the future. And then mm -hmm. it happens to you at that point. You're like, <laughs> oh, why did this happen to me? And now mm -hmm. you're going to pass it on to the same person, to the next person, because now it happened to you. You're like, oh, you're going to feel this one day. Most likely they will. They will learn the lesson. It's a continuous cycle that happens, but God does it, it he brings the pain and the hurt but for valuable lessons yeah. at the end of it all you're never you're not destroyed you're not killed you're not completely down you your life is overturned and you learn this valuable lesson that makes you a better man and a better character and this is why we're extracting all this out of you have any comments on that one i was trying to look back at the genealogy because with the deceit of yeah. jacob it runs in his Bloodline, because <laughs> his, um, I think it's Isaac? his, Isaac, Isaac. Yeah. right. Yeah. They all were deceiving each other. Literally, <laughs> even the mother was like trying to say, uh, Rebecca was like, yeah, yeah, go tell your father it's, um, you know, it's yeah. Esau, go tell him here, here's a coat, you know, cause he was more hairy, I guess, than the other brother. He's like, here, put this fur on, you know, so when the father touches you and smells you, you, you smell like your brother so he can get the blessing basically. Yep. Like it was all deceit from like the way beginning and it's like happening yeah. again. And it happened to, then it happened to Jacob. He was deceived by the father-in-law, by the father of, of, um, Rachel it, Laban. Yeah. 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 Laban of Rachel. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> and I, I still to this day don't even understand that story. Like why would Rebecca put, put her sons against each other like that? Like, yeah. what was the whole purpose? I don't understand that part. Yeah, we don't either. It's something you should definitely read into. We might talk about that in the future. Yeah. But it's definitely something that, like I said, all the drama you want, it's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Right. Uh, in verse 34, commentary, tearing one's clothes and wearing burlap, often called sackcloth, were signs of mourning, much like wearing black today. In the last commentary, verse 36, imagine the culture shock Joseph experienced upon arriving in Egypt. Joseph had lived as a nomad, traveling the countryside with his family, caring for sheep. Suddenly, he was thrust into the world's most 
advanced civiliza- civilization with great pyramids, beautiful homes, sophisticated people, and a new language. While Joseph saw the Egyptians' skill and intelligence at their best, he also saw their spiritual blindness. They worshipped countless gods related to every aspect of life. We're going to get more into this next time because it's going to mm-hmm. show you exactly what Joseph experienced, what he saw while he was actually in in this new place that he was brought to. Nice. So it's pretty amazing. And just to give you a recap, because this book has a brief recap on what happened. Joseph, as a young man, Joseph was overconfident. His natural self-insurance increased by being Jacob's favorite son and by knowing of God's designs on his life was unbearable to his 10 older brothers who eventually conspired against him. But this self-assurance molded by pain and combined with a personal knowledge of God allowed him to survive and prosper where most would have failed. He mm-hmm. added quiet wisdom to his confidence and won the hearts of everyone he met. Potiphar, the prison warden, and other prisoners, the Pharaoh, and after many years, even those 10 brothers. Perhaps you can identify with one or more of these hardships Joseph experienced, right? He was betrayed and deserted by his family. He was exposed to sexual temptation. We'll later talk about that. And punished for doing what was right. And he endured a long imprisonment and was forgotten by those he helped. As you read his story, note that Note what Joseph did in each case. His positive response transformed each setback into a step forward. He didn't spend much time asking why, right? Mm -hmm. We don't ask why when it happens to us. Mm -hmm. We keep going. His approach was, what shall I do now? Those who met Joseph were aware and wherever he went and whatever he did, God was with him. Mm -hmm. When you're facing a setback, the beginning of a Joseph-like attitude is to acknowledge that God is with you. His presence always sheds new light on a dark situation. His strengths and accomplishments were he rose in power from slave to ruler of Egypt, was known for his personal integrity, was a man of spiritual sensitivity, and prepared a nation to survive a famine. We'll later go and get into more of these. Yeah. Weakness and mistakes Youthful pride that caused friction with his brother. Yes, he had way too much pride. Lessons from his life. What matters? He was like a Kanye West at his time. (laughs) (laughs) Kanye (laughs) Z. Lessons from his life. What matters is not so much the events or circumstances of life, but our response to them. Right? You focus on the solutions and not the problem. You you react and. You think about how can you get through that next situation. The other lesson is with God's help, any situation can be used for good, even when others intend it for evil. When we get through this whole thing, you're going to be mind blown by how that actually happened. This is just giving you a snippet of it, but you'll understand what that means. Vital statistics, uh, where he was in Canaan and Egypt. Those are the two locations that depicts his story. Occupation, he was a shepherd, <laughs> a slave, a convict, and a ruler. Convict <laughs> music. <Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. His relatives, his parents were Jacob and Rachel, as we had talked about. His siblings, he had 11 brothers and one sister named in the Bible. Oh, you know, I didn't even realize he had a sister. Yeah, he had a sister. Rachel did have uh, another was it Rachel or Leah? I think it was the other Leah. the other wives. Because remember, he had two other wives. Yeah, yeah, he did. Jacob was the man. His wife. Excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying for back in the days. Me, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm the man right now. That's all I need. Okay. All right. <laughs> His wife was Asenath. His sons were Manasseh and Ephraim. Key verse. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man? So obviously filled with the spirit of God. That verse, we're going to get to it later on. But what you got to think about, can we find anyone else like this man? That 
brings power significance that shows his uniqueness mm -hmm. and how he utilized and that's how you want people to reference you can they find anyone else like you you always want to be remembered by that that's why you do everything with your heart i know i mentioned that in a couple of stories i posted on the channel but always remember to strive with your best efforts with all your heart no matter what obstacles challenges people put your way yeah. or they hatred jealousy or them trying to just inhibit you from getting to where you're trying to be just always go at your full potential give it all your heart yeah so that is pretty much all we've gotten for this chapter hope this was very insightful to you helps you understand the characteristics of a successful man in the beginning of the story i know this is where it seems very <laughs> negative into joseph's life and you know just like any movie you wait till the end and you're <laughs> gonna see the resolution and how things unfold you're gonna be at the edge of your seat because that's how we were when we were first reading the story together you have anything to add um just if you guys relate to anything we spoke about here and any of joseph's story so far let us know because we like to keep the discussion going yes drop in in the comments below give this a thumbs up share this with somebody if you took some message from this, if you found positivity in this, you can share the whole video or you can share part of it, right? YouTube has all these great essential tools from the app now you can utilize. So please do. And we're gonna conclude, I know I haven't prayed on this channel, but we're gonna conclude with a prayer because whenever we read the scriptures from the word, because this is a living word, very powerful, we have to do that so that way we can ensure, we understood it in a way that it needed to be understood and we also shared it with you in a way that it should have been shared and you are able to receive it carry it onto your life in a way that god wants it to impact into your life so yeah. you want to do the honors or should i do the honors you do the honors. i'll do the honors I'll do it next she'll week. do it next time all right <laughs> see i was making sure that was a test she lets me lead because i'm the man head of the household all right babe <laughs> okay let's do this right by your heads. Father, thank you for allowing us to get through this story, may this actual history that happened in the past that you have allowed us to be able to read through today, impact into our lives, unfold, give us wisdom in terms of the characteristics, the ways we need to carry ourselves throughout situations, mm -hmm. throughout deceptions, to not be jealous, to not be envy of anyone else but instead be grateful for all the things they've been able to accomplish how we can all work together yeah within all our goals we're trying to step through and reaching for success reaching for milestones to be accomplished to have that humbling heart but loving heart towards one another to be able to each one of us reach our destinations together in peaceful manners let yes. these words that we read on to today unpack into our lives, allow us the ability to understand it, to dig through further if we have to study a bit more. So give us the wisdom to be able to get through it in these manners. And we just thank you to all that's going to come as we continue this series yeah. for everyone on this other side who have been touched, impacted by anything we've read today allow it to just touch them and allow them the ability to understand it in a way that is meaningful for them that they can also have the opportunity to share anything we've spoken about today or they've learned and took away from this and we thank you pray in jesus name amen amen so thank you for tuning in and we will catch you next time we're going to chapter 38 which is going to be unpacking about joseph's after slavery yeah actually we might go to 39 but see y'all next time <laughs> <laughs>